Maybe I should have slept in longer. I mean, am I losing my mind or is that a pink elephant? I think the road's starting to get to me. Nope, wait a minute. He's not alone. It's one of our friends, the muffler man. Look at the size of that muffler man. This one looks like he's been working on some motorcycles. If you're mean to me, my big brother's gonna beat you up. Look, how about that? You can see International Fiberglass Company, Venice, California, wow. After we saw the first ever muffler man in Flagstaff, I feel like these guys are my friends wherever I see them. And I'm pretty sure I know how this one got here. On this enormous bicycle. All right, I guess it's more of a tricycle, but still, wow. Look at the size of these wheels. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a very unusual stop on Route 66. No, that's not a landing craft in front of us. Although it does look like little green men would feel right at home in here. This is a future. Churro house, prefabricated futuristic homes built in the 60s that just never caught on. Apparently, not very many people wanted to live in these. I don't know why. Fewer than 100 of these were ever actually produced and sold. Check it out. You can see the doorbell here on the outside. I've never actually seen one in person before, and now that I have, I don't know if I'm buying the whole prefabricated home story. Sounds like the perfect cover to make you-know-who blend in. This is the Pink Elephant Antique Mall. And as you can see, it's a very unusual place. This is easily the coolest antique mall, exterior at least, I've ever seen in my life. Look at this, our muffler man is not alone. International Fiberglass didn't just produce giant fellas. Uniroyal Gas also had them produce some lady fellas to advertise their stations. That would get me to pull off the highway. Normally these ladies are only clad in their bathing suits, but it looks like the pink elephant finally gave this one her dignity. Look, you can see the outline of her bikini top right there. They painted on some clothes and sewed her a skirt. And look at this! I don't even know what this is! Would you look at the size of that guy? I literally don't even come up to his knees. I don't know where this came from, but looks like he's dressed for the weather. Oh, he's enjoying a tasty little ice cream treat. We got a little diner here serving ice cream and sandwiches and snacks and stuff. And look, they even hired some entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, this place is cool. Aha! Uh -huh. I knew it! They're definitely hiding something here. Wow, no wonder this place is so big. It's in the former Livingston High School building. Livingston, Illinois doesn't look like it's that big of a town. Maybe they still have high school in there. If all the rest of that stuff wasn't enough to get me to pull over this, would have done it. Any business with a Gatling gun out front just sends such a welcoming message. We're gonna shoot you full of fun. Okay, now I have to see the inside. Ma'am? Oh my gosh, it is the old high school. Look at this. The entire gym is full. You can still see the school mascot up there and even the scoreboard on the side. Holy moly, that's the weirdest thing ever. Check this out, look in here. All the old classrooms are booths now. I'm looking here. This would have led to the front door of the school. That is so weird. This looks like way more fun than my high school. Wow, what a crazy idea. Turn the high school into an antique mall. Ah. Clowns. My grandma used to collect clowns. Some of them are okay. Some of them are scary. Why did everyone say we're scary? I just can't get over the fact that this was a high school. I can't believe how much cool stuff is in here. Wow, it's pretty amazing in here. Literally, because it's kind of like a maze. Some old records. That would be a pretty cool one to pick up around here. Dang, that's a rad looking clock. They don't make them like they used to. Backwards duck. Oh, snap. We're gonna need this. Oh, just what I need. Dang, they got Buck in the System too from the Tough Hunt series. This place is getting me all hot and bothered, mostly because it's like 100 degrees in here. Oh, the basement is open too. Why does the high school have a basement? Other than tornadoes. Were there classrooms in the basement or do you think these were the locker rooms? Do kids go to class down here in this scary flickering lighting? It really seems like they did. Maybe they made the freshmen come down here. You scrubs go to the basement. You gotta work your way up. Yep, this was the high school, all right. I was the gym teacher. I used to slap them boys and girls around all day and teach them a lesson. That sounds terrible, old timer. You sound like a real jerk. That's why they kept me in the basement and never let me go. Okay, well, I'm just gonna leave doing? now. Come back! 
Let's talk some more. Let's be best friends. I still got my slapping hand. I just realized that if I don't leave right now, I'm going to be in here all day. Yeah, that's officially the weirdest high school I've ever been to. All right, time to cruise up old Route 66 and see what else we can find. I gotta say, all these states have done a great job with the signs. You can pretty much follow the signs for all the different paths of old 66, except in the cities, because apparently people keep stealing the signs. So you'll be following the signs and all of a sudden you're like, oh no, where am I? But out here in the countryside, it's pretty easy to follow, even when it does twist and turn. Of course, some towns had multiple paths of Route 66 through them, so I backtracked and take all of them and in this case I'm really glad I did because look what I found here it is it's rich Henry's rabbit ranch look at this homemade tourist attraction check out these old Campbell Express trucks there's the 66 camel up there without a face he's still humping to please though that used to mean hurrying guys control your giggling look at this another car hinge built out of Volkswagen rabbits this is amazing what's wrong with rusty old cars. Nothing, nothing at all. Check out these old signs. Wow, imagine getting your hands on those. There's a bunch of old rabbits right there all lined up in a row like Cadillac Ranch. But funny enough, that is not how this place got its name. It's because Mr. Henry's daughter, he's showing some people around right over there, had some extra rabbits and asked if he could watch them for a little while. No, not these rabbits. These no. type of rabbits. Yeah. Uh, the bunnies came along in 1999. And uh, they have overtaken my passion from Route 66. Uh, this is how it started. Pepper was number one bunny when they came in. Oh, so they your daughter's babies. rabbits had babies. Exactly. And so that's how you started with the bunnies. I took them from her. Ah. I, I confiscated them. This is Little Red. And Little Red is 12 pounds. Oh, 12 pounds. he's so nice. Hey, yeah. buddy. I wasn't expecting to pet. A rabbit, rabbit today, but I'm so happy that I did now. Well, you're so handsome. Oh, I see. That's big red there. That's why you're little red. Bunny. This place is amazing. Rich has ten living bunnies here. Smokey and Henri Henry. Destiny. Gizmo. Hubert and Mary. Sprint and Blackberry. So in 18 years, ten living bunnies now. Fifty-six. Have passed on. So you've had 66 yeah. bunnies yeah, on Route 66. 66. You uh, love these bunnies more than most people love their children. Probably so. And yeah, there's Elvis. The most recent. Yeah, he left the building. Yeah. If you're ever in the area, you have to come and meet Rich. He will talk to you about bunnies all day. He loves these things. This seems sad, but he makes it so happy because they all have little stories. This is one of my new favorite stops on Route 66. Old signs and old gas pumps. Old trucks. These are cool because Rich and his father were both truck drivers. I think he has a son who's a truck driver too. These things are still running. And of course the Volkswagen Rabbit Ranch. There's actually a lot of Volkswagens here. He even has one of Bob Waldmeyer's old Volkswagen. For those of you who don't remember the story, Bob was the son of the guy who invented the corn dog and then later became a famous sort of hippie wanderer artist up and down Route 66 doing all these famous posters. And his Volkswagen, fittingly, is at the Rabbit Ranch. How cool is this gift shop? It's all set up like an old gas station. Well, a gas station with rabbits. But aside from all that and the bunnies and Rich himself who turned out to be super awesome, I think this is my favorite part. Look familiar? It's another fun pig bunny. This one's about two feet taller than the one at the jackrabbit. Let me just pop on down here. Whoa. It's another giant fiberglass rabbit. It's almost identical to the one at the Jackrabbit Trading Post, only this one, like I said, is a little bit taller. You would think he did it as an homage to the Jackrabbit, but nope. It turns out it's just a weird coincidence. He saw a jackalope version of this at the famous Wall Drug, figured out who made it, and wanted to order a non-jackalope rabbit version for himself. One giant fiberglass rabbit on Route 66 is awesome. But two giant rabbits is epic. Tally-ho! Wow, that's a hair-raising good time. <laughs> I really like hopping off of that guy. They should put a slide on there. Look at the signs up there. Wascally Wabbits get their kicks meeting folks on 66. I had no idea what to expect when I pulled over here. I expected some rabbits, but I didn't know that there would be 10 of them. This place is amazing, a true labor of love. And the owner slash operator is one of the coolest characters 
that I met on the whole highway. Definitely make a stop at the Rabbit Ranch if you can. I love DIY tourist attractions. And this one's not a tourist trap. It's a bona fide labor of love from the type of guys you wish you saw more often on the old highways. Definitely, definitely worth a stop. And now, back to the highway. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, what's that? You turn, you turn. Oh, wow. In all of these miles, I've seen quite a few restored gas stations, but this is the first time that I've seen a shell station. It's also the first time I've seen a kid riding through town on a tractor before. Now all of Illinois is a small town. The sign says this station was built in 1926 and was open until 1991. It was owned by the Soulsby family the whole time and only ever sold shell gasoline. Wow, how cool looking is that in there? It seems like it's been all fixed up and restored. I got some information and some t-shirts in there, but not open today. Actually, judging by the dust, I don't think they've been open for a little while. Sometimes these places are only open in the summer or on holiday weekends, though. Dang, it really felt for a second like I was gonna pull up and someone was gonna come out and ask if I needed gas. I mean, that is a beautiful piece of history. Pristine. I mean, they could film a movie here about this right now. This sucker's ready to go. Looks like there's a lot of old memorabilia inside. Wish we could go in there. Well, maybe I'll scoot by on the way home and see if they're open that day. That's awesome. I wish I could fill up right here. I could use some super shell gas. Especially at this price. 33 cents per gallon. Yep, them were the good old days, I tell you what. All right, let's keep cruising. Wow, I don't know what town I'm in now, but this place is a total dump. L-O-L-O-L-O-L. -L -L -L. Get it? Because it's an actual, because it's, because, okay. Oh, look at this. Found another section of Ghost Road. Look at that. The modern road beds over there, old Route 66, along the side. You gotta figure, till the interstate came along, this was the main highway between Chicago and St. Louis. I mean, I'm standing out here right now and I haven't seen really any cars come by at all. Here's a school bus, that's about it. It's crazy to think that they needed a two-lane divided highway at one time out here for all the traffic. Not anymore. All right, let's keep going. Just a little further down the road is Litchfield, Illinois. And look at this old cafe here. I don't, I don't I don't think they're open for lunch. It's not only this old brick cafe, there's also this old gas station, maybe an old Phillips 66 station, and behind it, a few very small motel rooms. And there's some even older ones on the other side. What's interesting is this was Route 66 in the 1930s, and then afterwards, Route 66 was over there. So all they really had to do is put their signs on the other road. A lot of times, people who own those little motels would live right on the property, like maybe that house right there was the owner of that. It's a pretty cool snapshot of a time where if you owned a little piece of property, which was much cheaper back then, you could pop up a few motel rooms, maybe a gas station, a cafe, and have yourself a little roadside empire. All no more than 30 feet from your door. I don't know for sure that that's what happened here, but it seems likely. I love the Midwest. It's been a while since I've been here. There's just something about a small Midwestern town that I love, especially at sunset when you get the fireflies going. Friendly faces, interesting places. Oh, what's that? Looks Route 66-ish. Oh, wow, that is awesome. It looks like like I've accidentally stumbled on another Route 66 museum. Sweet. Wow. You never know what to expect when you come into these museums. This one blows me away. Look at that. So many photos of the place, even before Route 66 was here. The lady who greeted me at the front even used to own a little motel on Route 66. No air conditioning, huh? No, no telephones. Nope. But five dollars a night? Uh -huh, for one man and seven for a couple. Oh, can't yes. beat those prices. How about that? I was right about the last place we saw. It used to be the Belvedere Motel. It started in 1929. Back when you could still get a meal at Skinny's Cafe. Mmm, Skinny's. Oh, I found Pee Wee's bike. Man, this place rules. Now that's a classy ride. Dang, I love stuff like this. Look at that old jukebox. No, look at that old sign. I want all of this. Oh, here's a Route 66 map by Bob Waldmeyer. Waldmeyer, Waldmeyer, Waldmeyer. Look at that. There's his photo and there's some examples of his 
art. You see these postcards for sale everywhere on Route 66 and the posters. I love museums like this. If you spend enough time looking at the stuff in here, you really feel like you went back in time. That's so cool. It's one thing passing the ruins of old motels and motor courts, but it's another thing to hear the stories about them from someone who actually owned and worked at one. Look at this. Right across the street is the old Ariston Cafe. At least that's the way they pronounced it. It was built in 1935 and it's still family owned and still in operation. Look at that old neon up there. Some of it's a little flickery right now, but it's still going strong. That is awesome. They also have an amazing old original single screen drive-in theater in town. Dang, I missed the movie. It's only on weekends. I've been traveling the 1930s portion of Route 66, but there's an even older segment that I'd like to get to before nightfall. Oh yeah, back on old two-lane 66. Look at that. It's a great big country we have out here. It's a pleasure to come and see some of it. Ooh, Carlinville, Illinois. Illinois. Never even heard of this place. Some beautiful old houses here. And wow, look at that courthouse. Route 66 only came through here for a few years. But wow, is this town ever worth visiting. Look at it. It's crazy looking. It's beautiful. Dang, I'm stopping in here again on my way home. This is awesome. Sneaky Statue of Liberty. Now just a few miles later, we're already to another small town. Nilwood, Illinois. Not much to Nilwood. Maybe that's why it's called Nilwood, huh? Pun? No? Okay. Man, it's crazy how much time it takes to go 30 miles on these old highways. In a way, it makes you understand why they created the interstate. Because going down these farm roads is very time consuming. I love driving on this old school concrete version of the highway though. Wherever I can find it. I get stoked. I don't even know what this town's called. The only sign I saw said Bud Light. I guess we're in Bud Light, Illinois. This Bud's for you, bud. Today I've driven through Gillespie, Carlinville, Nilwood, Gerard, Verdon, Thayer, and now Auburn. Way off the beaten path onto old Route 66 to see something special. This is 100% not Normal. Until 1930, this was Route 66, the main road between Chicago and St. Louis, and eventually, obviously, LA. And as you can see, the road was paved with brick. A lot of old main streets that the highway passed through were already paved with brick. But this isn't the center of some old town. This is the middle of nowhere. Check that out. Out. Cars are still driving on it today. That is mind-blowing. That's about 90 years of Brick 66. It's got its fair share of patches and potholes. But what a piece of history. This was built when they were still trying to figure out what's the best method for creating a long-lasting highway. Is it concrete? Is it this? Out west Route 66 was still all dirt roads when this brick highway was constructed. This road is so old that people were still driving their horses and buses from their farms to town on it. And unlike modern asphalt or even concrete, these all had to be laid in by hand. Imagine the effort that went into creating this. And now nearly a hundred years later, we're here driving on it. Look at that. It's not just a short little segment. This goes on and on. This is amazing. Follow the red brick road. Follow the red brick road. Follow, 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 follow the red brick road. That is amazing. Because of the differing alignments, I have now driven well over 2,000 miles on this trip on all different kinds of Route 66. Interstate, four lane highway, two lane highway, concrete highway, dirt roads, gravel roads, old roads, new roads, tough roads, sissy roads, roads that climb on rocks, up mountains, over rivers, down through the valleys. But of all that, this has to be the most unusual portion. Look at that, it's a pretty picture but it's definitely not what you picture when you think of Route 66. This is amazing. A major U.S. highway paved with brick. Ah! Honestly, Kansas should have done this on their part of Route 66, but, you know, with yellow. It's not too late, Kansas. You could pave the... Rainbow Bridge area with yellow brick and then you go over the rainbow, never mind. Well, that is what I crossed into the wilds of Illinois to see today, this beautiful brick highway. I cannot believe how far we've come, but of course the journey is not over yet. 
tomorrow we're headed towards a very exciting town so make sure you are here remember hats and t-shirts and how to support the videos if you like them down in the links below instagram live fast die poor snapchat too i think facebook is justin scarred and of course there's justinscarred.com all right till the next time this is the blues riff and b watch me for the changes and try to keep up see ya <laughs>